Hi guys and welcome back to Top Speed Golf. Today we're going to take a look at one of the students of the website. He's got a lot of uh, great motions in his golf swing, but struggling a little bit with distance, swinging about 99 miles an hour on average, what he said, for the, the driver, and not getting the consistency from day in to day out. So we're going to talk about a couple things that he can do to really get more consistency and improve his speed a little bit. And uh, I know a lot of you guys that are working on your own speed can work on these same drills and it's going to help you right away. Let's go ahead and get started. All right, so first let's talk about uh, when he's working to the top of the swing. He mentioned that he's not getting quite as much speed as he'd like to, only getting 99 miles an hour of club head speed, even though, uh, you know, basically said that everybody's telling him how great his swing is, and he does. He has a very nice looking swing. A lot of the difficult pieces are already really good, uh, but not quite getting the speed that he wants. So if we go back to address, let's actually start from there. One second here, let me rewind back to the beginning. I'll go ahead and mark on the beginning of the, the takeaway. We can see that he's got a little bit of spine tilt here, which is nice. As he goes to the top of the swing, we're going to be able to see that he maintains this, which is one of the reasons that this is a good thing to do for consistency. You can see he's maintaining that there. And as he comes into the downswing, we can see that he's actually a little bit too vertical. He needs to be slightly more tilted away from the target. So we talk about in the stable fluid spine, how at impact we'd like to be tilted away somewhere between you know 20 and 25 degrees so this number should read about 115 degrees and we're seeing it's only reading about 105 so we need to get tilted away slightly more away from the target so he's gonna feel like his shoulders at impact are tilted a bit more like this and his nose is gonna feel like it's more behind the golf ball so right now if we draw a line down there vertically we're gonna see that this is probably barely behind the golf balls where you'd be at impact. We need to get even a little bit more than that. So that's really gonna help with power getting behind that golf ball is gonna help it to consistently turn over from time and time again. So that's gonna help not only with more power, but it's also gonna to help to get a little bit more of a consistent shot by getting the ball to turn on over. Now a great drill for this is to feel like at, at setup, we're gonna have the belt buckle a little bit farther forward and we're going to have the nose a little bit farther back. And as he goes to the top of the swing, we're going to feel like his, his nose is loaded up to the inside of his right foot. All right, so right about there. And then as he starts down, so he's doing a pretty good job with that already. That's a good top of the backswing position. He could probably go a little bit more to the right. But there's the nose at the top of the backswing. Now in the downswing, we're going to feel like his nose or his head stays behind the ball. And this is where you're gonna see where it gets a little bit off track as he starts down, watch his first move down is to let his head shift about six or eight inches to the left. And that gets everything too far over the top and, and starts to throw things a little bit off there. So that small change will help him with uh, getting a little bit more power and consistency. Now the second thing that's gonna tie in with this kind of hand in hand is it, as he goes to the top, let's go ahead and make sure that he gets a good full powerful turn. We go over this in the power turn, the top speed golf system. Feel like this right shoulder goes back and the left shoulder kind of comes under like this and really twists to get loaded up. So the hips are doing pretty well. Let's go ahead and get the shoulders to turn just a few more degrees to really stretch out and feel like we're getting in a nice position there. And that's going to boost the power a little bit more also. And then as we start down, we can see that he's also losing a little bit of lag now the main reason for him losing lag is he's getting a little bit steep in the downswing. I mentioned this before, as we're first starting down, we want to shallow out that shaft a little bit. Let's go ahead and, and draw a few lines here and talk about exactly what I mean with this. A lot of you struggling with lag when you're looking from face on, uh, maybe struggling with the same thing. So here, let's go back to this side again and let's go back to the top of the swing. We can see as he starts down, starts to lose that shaft angle. And then as he's coming into impact, he's, he's getting rid of that. And we see a little bit of a flip. So instead of getting into the straight line release, we can see that his hands are going past uh, just right in front of the golf ball. So here's something that's going to help with that a lot. As he starts the backswing, we're going to notice that as he goes to the top of the backswing, this club shaft, let me go ahead and play this for you. See if we can get this to work here. There we go. So this club shaft is gonna to start to get a little bit steep on the downswing. We want this club to be tracing down as he starts about halfway for the hands and the club to be on this red line. 
So we can see that he's, he's parallel with it. He's not really far off or anything, but the hands and club, instead of being here, should be, we'll go ahead and change the color of this to, let's make it green or yellow, that'll be fine. The hands and the club should be, whoops, didn't change my color for me, but it should be tracing on this, this uh, elbow plane here. And we can see that he's above this a little bit. So what he needs to feel like he's doing is getting this club to shallow out and be below the shoulder as he starts down. So right now it's hitting right on the shoulder. I want as he starts this downswing for the club shaft to feel like it starts to move. His hands and the club both start to move in this way to flatten out. And that club gets below the shoulder. So right here I'd like to see an angle of the club shaft more like this almost matching that, that, that plane line there. And a good thing that's gonna help with this, a, a way to, to feel this too, is to feel like he really gets the, the wrist bowed a little bit. So to feel like that club face is shutting and to feel like the wrist is bowing a little bit more. So instead of the club face being straight up and down, let's get this right wrist angle down toward the ground. I talk about getting the palm toward the ground a little bit more. The palm's gonna feel like it's down toward the ball like that with your right hand. Right now, his palm is feeling like it's a little bit more this way. So getting that palm down is gonna close the face very, very slightly. So the club face, instead of being straight up and down, is gonna be a little bit more in this position. And that left wrist is gonna be a little bit more bowed to where the logo of your glove feels like it's down toward the ground. Now this closing of the club face is necessary when we start getting more forward shaft lean. If we jump over to this other video again, if you try to get more forward shaft lean, without getting that club face to rotate on closed, what's gonna happen is the club face is gonna be open. Club face is gonna to be too open coming in, and what is gonna happen is he's gonna feel like he struggles to square up the face, and he wants to flip that club to get the club face to square on up. So those couple things, number one, shallowing out the shaft a little bit as he starts down, and then number two, getting that club face to close a little bit more is gonna make it a lot easier to get that forward shaft lean and to really compress that golf ball. So several tips there that are really gonna help him out. Um, as he's doing the backswing, a little bit more shoulder turn. Keeping that nose behind the ball as he starts down is gonna get him a lot more consistent ball flight and a lot more power. He's gonna feel like he's loaded up behind the ball to really let that go. And then as he starts the downswing, we're gonna shallow out this club, shallow out the hands to get him coming in like you see all the pros doing. And then feeling like you're rotating this club face a little bit more closed early that way, when you get more forward shaft lean, you're still going to hit a, a straight, solid shot. If you put these things together, I know it sounds like a lot, but these are all fairly uh, fairly simple changes to make because the swing itself is looking so good. The, the big pieces, the tough pieces to make are already in really good in good shape, already a great looking swing, nice fluid uh, flow to it, which is really nice. So work on those things. I know uh, you're going to be playing a lot better. Good luck to you guys out there. Uh, play well and work hard. All right, so those of you watching on YouTube, I got a fantastic bonus for you. We all need lag. We want to have tons of lag and to release that lag coming through contact to get that nice forward shaft lean, let the club whip on through there really, really quickly. I got a great video for you that's going to go over the number one lag mistake that I see happening in the backswing. So if you want more lag, work on this video. It's going to help you to set those wrists late so you're increasing your back, increasing your lag in the downswing. I'm going to play a preview of that. Uh, get instant access to that once you click the link or sign up in the description below if you're on a mobile device that's where you need to go is drop down the description and click the link from there if you have any questions post them in the comments click the thumbs up button i look forward to seeing you guys in the lag video and also remember to subscribe that way you'll see our latest videos work on that lag it's going to help you to really compress the golf ball i'll see you guys soon hi guys and welcome back i'm clay ballard and in today's video we're going to talk about one of the absolute worst drills for creating lag it's a very common drill that i see and in this drill what we're going to do is we're going to set the wrist very early to create an angle of lag and then we're going to try to hold this throughout the swing it's one of the worst things that you can, that you can do to build lag i'm going to talk about the science behind why this is the case and i'm also going to give you a great drill to help you improve your lag all in this video Let's go ahead and get started. I do it this way versus holding that position. Exact same thing happens when we're building lag in the golf swing. So what we want to do is throughout the swing, I want to have a very low and wide takeaway. So I'm not going to set my wrist early at all. If you look at a lot of the top players, you look at uh, Adam Scott, very wide takeaway, not very much wrist set at all. You look at Roy McIlroy, you look at Tiger Woods, 
all these players are using a wide takeaway and not getting very much wrist set so that later in the swing, as we start down, we can increase this wrist set and we're really only gonna max out this angle of lag for a split second in the downswing. Okay, so a three-step drill here. Now, as we get started with this, I want to remind you that the fulcrum in this golf club for getting a massive amount of lag is right at the end of the golf club. This is where I want my hinge point to be. I wanna use the full length of this club to build lag and then release lag.